Yo, what's up y'all boys and girls, man? Hey, it's Jay Briggs here on a Tuesday, April 4th, 2023, bringing y'all my NBA Jam Session. Man, we're trying to cook up this NBA per usual. I ain't gonna lie, missed y'all yesterday, man. We had no NBA yesterday. I kind of got my ass cleaned up yesterday, too. Uh, MLB was not kind to me. Championship game didn't go my way either, but... Back in that NBA, man, we've been red hot this last week or so in the NBA, man. We're going to try to keep the momentum rolling forward into tonight, into this week, man. If you're looking for more of this great content, y'all know what to do. Smash that like button, subscribe if you're new, and drop y'all like down in the comments. As you know, I love going through, seeing who y'all like, man. My best bets, they can be found over at Pick Docs Premium. Just click that link in the description. It takes you right to my handicapper page. That's where you can find my long-term packages, three-day, seven-day, 30-day, monthly, yearly, seasonal. You can also find all my bets for today's action, including that NBA Jam Session play, man. We've been red hot on that play. We've hit seven of our last 10 on that play, man. We go for eight of 11 on that play today, man. Scoop it up, 19 bucks. Link in the description. Also, my MLB play of the day will be for sale up there as well. We did drop it yesterday with the Rangers. 4-1 to begin the season on that play, man. We dropped it yesterday. We'll get back on track today. I love today's play, man. Scoop that up over there as well. And uh, check me out on my live shows. I am live on this Pick Dogs YouTube channel every day, 3 Central, 4 Eastern, man. As I bring on a guest, we run through the card one more time. We update y'all on late injury news and information that came out of the association. And we drop a free part late for y'all at the end of the show as well. So come spend some time with your guy later on today, 3 Central, 4 Eastern, right here on the same channel. And follow me on Twitter, at ParlayGuyJ, man. That's where I be at mostly all day, man. So any questions or anything, I'm on Twitter. Hit me there. Parlay guy J, man. Huge card today, 13 games. Glad to have the NBA back. A lot of games today, but I know what we're finna do. We're finna smash it and cook it up per usual, man. Thank y'all for watching. Thank y'all for being here. Let's make some money today. And without further ado, let's hop right into tonight's NBA action. In our first matchup of the night, man, we got the Toronto Raptors out on the road facing the Charlotte Hornets. Raptors length 14 and a half, total 223. We just saw this meeting two days ago on the second. It was on a Sunday. Raptors hammered this Hornets team by 20 points, 128, 108. I didn't have it as a premium, but I did lean the Hornets on the jam session that day. As the Raptors, they've been terrible on the road uh, a lot recently. At home, they've been money. On the road, they've been quite terrible. We know what's up with the Hornets, man. One of the worst teams in the league. Um, also, with that, a lot of their top guys. Also, one of the worst home cover teams in the NBA, which makes this one tough. Probably not going to have no action on this one again. But in a lean, I lean Hornets uh, with all these points plus the 14 and a half. I know the Raptors just beat them by 20, but I still don't want to be laying 14 and a half with the Raptors on the road. It's just quite honestly, I don't. I'd rather have 14 and a half points in my back pocket. Can the Raptors blow these guys out? Yes, uh, they, they just did it. They can. But do they do it back to back? I don't know, man. And they're also on the front end of a back to back as they got them Celtics tomorrow in a huge game um i think that one's on the road as well so i think the raptors get out of here with the win i really do uh they need it still fighting for playoff seating they're currently at 500 they're about to be above 500 for um one of the first times in a minute for this raptors team i do think they win this game but i think the hornets can't keep this one competitive man the hornets were scrappy before those two losses they have gotten blown out in back-to-back -back games by this raptors team and the chicago bulls on their home floor like I said, they're one of the worst home cover teams in the entire NBA. But, you know, I think we might see that Charlotte Hornets team that was competitive against Oklahoma City beat them straight up, beat my Mavs straight up in back-to-back -back games. All three of those, they were double-digit dogs. This is kind of where the Hornets feast. Would not be surprised at all if they covered this line. Not in a rush to lay this many points with Toronto on the road. Give me the Hornets plus the 14 and a half here in our first one of the day. In our next matchup of the night, man, we got the Miami Heat out on the road facing the Detroit Pistons. Miami laying 12 and a half on the road, man. Total 221. Short, sweet, and simple for me, man. I'm not laying 12 and a half points with the worst cover team in the league. I'm just not doing it. Simple. I'm not doing it. But in that same breath, I really don't want to grab the points with the Pistons. I do lean that direction in a small, small lean. Small, small lean. Probably the smallest lean of the night. I do lean Pistons. But this is another one. Just not going to bet, man. Too many spots right now, man. We got baseball back. All that great stuff, man. More so than anything, I'm telling y'all what I'm not betting. Uh, more so than what I am. And I feel like this one, why should you be in a rush to like 12 and a half with the Miami Heat on the road? Are the Pistons awful? Yes, we understand that. Miami still has a ton to play for. Can still need to establish some momentum rolling into the playoffs. Uh, this Pistons team is god awful, man. Terrible. But in that same breath, it's laying 12 and a half with the Miami Heat. 
somewhere you really want to be, man. No, it's not. So that's how I'm handicapping this one, man. I lean Pistons in a small, small lean. It's more so a fade of Miami. Miami did get a win in their last one and a cover on their home floor, which they never do, against my favorite team, the Dallas Mavericks, 129-122. But before that on the road, man, they were not looking good, and it does not make me want to lay this 12 and a half. They got hammered by New York, shorthanded New York, 101-92. Uh, got hammered in Toronto, 106-92. Brooklyn took them behind the shed in Miami, 129-100. That win over the Mavs does nothing for me. We all know what's up with my Mavs, man. We don't even got to talk about it. Not laying 12 and a half with the heat in this spot, man. Short, sweet, and simple. I lean Pistons in a small lean. I probably won't grab the points. The Pistons are awful, but in that same breath, I would not be surprised if they caught a backdoor cover against this Miami Heat team today. In our next matchup of the night, man, we got the Cleveland Cavaliers out on the road facing the Orlando Magic. Cleveland laying four and a half on the road, total 223. Hey, grabbing the points with the Magic, bro. They just been balling in this same spot all year, man. This home underdog spot. Magic 17 and 10. ATS at home as home underdogs, man. We know what's up with Cleveland. We love betting Cleveland on their home floors. That's where they go stupid, dummy, crazy. On the road, they're just not the same juggernaut out there as they are at home. Um, as Cleveland is 17, 20, and 2 ATS out on the road, man. The Magic be balling at home. This is where they are in their element. Uh, if y'all haven't been paying attention, this Magic team coming out of the All-Star break has really been in that mode, man. I've loved what I've seen from this Magic team. They've won four of their last five. I think they keep it rolling tonight. I would not be surprised if they kept this one super competitive. Technically, they're not out of the play-in tournament, but they are. They would need to win, I think, all four remaining games and they would need the Bulls to lose all three it's not impossible but I don't think it happens but I do think we see um some emphasis on this game tonight and the Magic just do what the Magic been doing playing really great basketball might cover at home might mess around and win this one at home Cleveland they're kind of just going through the motions man as their last three games they play this Magic team today they play them again in two days and then they end with the Hornets so it's the motivation for this Cavs team to do anything going into the playoffs they're pretty much locked in to where they're going to be. I like the Magic plus the four and a half in this one. Magic also working with double revenge as Cleveland has beat this team twice this season. 103-92 on the 26th of October, really early in the season. And 107-96 on the 2nd of December, um, early in the season as well. Both were in Cleveland. These last two are in Orlando. Orlando feast in his home underdog spot. I'm going to grab the points with them. Cleveland, not the same juggernaut on the road as they are on their home floor. Magic plus a four and a half for me here in this one. In our next matchup of the night, man, we got the Milwaukee Bucks out on the road facing the Washington Wizards. Milwaukee's laying 13, total 231 and a half, man. We were on Milwaukee the last time we seen them in a bounce back spot as they beat up on the Sixers in that one. That was our play of the day. We've hit seven of our last 10 on that play. That was the last time we had it as there was no NBA yesterday. Um, they beat up on the Sixers in that one, 117-104 on their home floor. In a bounce-back spot, they had got aired out the game before that at home by the Celtics, man. 140-99, to a 41-point loss uh, did that Bucks team suffer. But we knew they were going to bounce back as they're the king of the bounce-back uh, this year in the NBA. Off a loss this season, Milwaukee Bucks are the best ATS team in the league. Um, that's just what they do. They just bounce back. And we had them in that spot. They're on the road in this one facing a depleted Wizards team, a Wizards team that is done. Uh, they're eliminated from the play-in contention. They're sitting all their guys. I lean Milwaukee in this one, man. I don't see how we don't. No Kuzma, no Morris, no Bill, no Porzingis. For the Bucks, they've got some injury concerns as well. No Chris Middleton, no Grayson Allen, and I'm seeing Myers Leonard as questionable, but I'm seeing Giannis in there. I'm seeing uh, Brooke Lopez in there. I'm seeing Drew Holiday in there. They definitely got enough pieces to run this Wizards team out of the building. They should do it. Could this be a spot where the Wizards possibly catch a backdoor cover? Maybe. But uh, I think the Bucks couldn't roll these guys, even if their top guys don't play a lot of clock. So uh, I know the Wizards did cover the last one, 117-111. Uh, that game was kind of weird, though. No, actually, Milwaukee covered that game. I, I remember that game. That game was kind of weird. Uh, a lot of people had sat that game, I believe, for Milwaukee. They covered, though. I think they cover in this one as well. I'll lay the 13 with the Bucks. Here in this one, hard to fade Milwaukee, man. They just be in that mode. And I'm not fading them for the Wizards of all teams with all, all four of their top guys. No, sir. Bucks laying the 13. Here in this one. 
In our next matchup of the night, man, we got the Minnesota Timberwolves, a.k.a. also known as the name that I gave them at the beginning of the season, and it's a perfect fit. I'm talking about perfect. Like, I should have trademarked it. They should add this to their actual team name. The Minnesota Timberwolves, also known as the House of Disappointment. Woo! Did I not tell y'all that they could very well lose outright to that Portland team the last time they were out? They were 18 or like 17-point favorites lost outright to the Portland Trailblazers. That is the Minnesota Timberwolves in the flesh. And then watch this. They're going to turn around and win this one tonight. It's what they do, bro. It's what they do. I've kind of figured them out here recently. When you think the Timberwolves finna do something, go the other way. Just go the other way. You're going you're gonna to make money. When it looks like a spot where, ooh, this doesn't look good for the Timberwolves, take them. Take them. They get it done. And I kind of feel like that's what's in order here today. The Nets have been playing great basketball. They've won four of their last five, including three straight at home wins over Utah. Uh, barely beat Utah. They're now in 111-110. Beat up on the Hawks at home, 124-107. Beat up on the Rockets at home, 123-114. Lost on the road to a Magic team that's been playing really good basketball. We talked about them a minute ago. 119-106, and they hammered Miami out on the road, 129-100. We've seen these two teams face off once already this season. Well, not long ago either. It was in March in Minnesota with the Nets winning that one, the 124-123 in overtime on the 10th of March. So it wasn't that long ago, man. This one's in Brooklyn, and I think it goes the other way. I think the Timberwolves get their uh, revenge in this one. I think the Timberwolves have much more to play for as the Nets are pretty much locked into that 6 seed. The Heat are not going to catch them. Uh, the Timberwolves could fall out, but they're not going to fall out. My Mavs, it's pretty evident we're not going to make the playoffs now. It's really sickening. It's really disgusting. I don't want to talk about it. But Timberwolves, man, I think they get this one done in typical Timberwolves fashion. I think they bounce back off that ugly loss to the Timberwolves. I mean, to the Portland Trail Blazers. How do you lose to the Blazers as 17-point favorites? I can tell you how because they're the house of disappointment. That's what they do. They love disappointing people. And I think a lot of people are ready to fade the Timberwolves now as they've lost three straight games to Phoenix, Lakers, and Portland. I think a lot of people are tired of their shit, man. And I think a lot of people are going to be upset and disappointed by the Timberwolves again as they hop on the nets. And the T-Wolves win this one straight up in typical Minnesota Timberwolves house of disappointment fashion. I'm going to take them today. Land the one. I think they get this one done. In our next matchup of the night, man, we got a hell of a game. I'm excited to watch this one tonight. We got the Celtics out on the road facing the Sixers. Philly Lang 2, total 227. Whew. These teams playing uh, carousel right now as all the top teams in the East really kind of just played each other. The Celtics just hammered the Bucks. The Bucks turn around and beat up on the Sixers team. And if I'm going to be honest today, I think the Sixers beat up on the Celtics and they just complete the little wheel trifecta thing. Uh... It's really hard to call a team who's coming out of the East, man. I could see either one of these three teams or even the Cleveland Cavaliers coming out of the East, man. Do not sleep on that Cleveland team coming out of the East, bro. Don't sleep on them. But I like the Sixers today, and here's why. I think the Sixers um, bounce back after that terrible loss to the Bucks out on the road, 117-104. They are at home where they've played their best basketball all season. We know the Sixers are straight money at home. ATS, they are the second best cover team at home right now. At 24, 14, and 1, have covered in 63.2% of their games. Also working with Triple Revenge, as the Boston Celtics have won all three meetings this season. Uh, the first one in uh, Boston, 126, 117, on the 18th of October. I think that game kicked off the start of the season. 106, 99, on the 8th of February. Uh, that game was in Boston as well. So Boston won the first two in Boston. And then the last one was in Philadelphia. On the 25th of February, Boston came into Philly and won that one, 110-107. I don't think the Sixers get swept by the Celtics team. I don't think so. I'm also seeing Robert Williams out for this one tonight and Jalen Brown questionable. I think that's huge, especially no Robert Williams. That's their interior defender. And with Embiid roaming down there tonight, I think Embiid probably has a field day. Sixers really need this one, man. They got to compete with the Celtics team to get to the finals. They got to get uh, through this team to get their most, most likely and uh, it's a good matchup to gather some momentum versus this team heading into the playoffs. I like the Sixers working with Triple Revenge at home where they played their best basketball all season. The Celtics missing their big guy and possibly without Jalen Brown tonight. I'll update y'all on Jalen Brown later on today on the live jam session, 3 Central, 4 Eastern. Hopefully we have some news on him by then. But I'm leaning Sixers on this one. I think they bounce back off that loss to Milwaukee and get some revenge on the Celtics that's beat them every time this season. 
In our next matchup of the night, man, we got the Atlanta Hawks out on the road facing your Chicago Bulls, man. Bulls are running four at home, total 235. It's an interesting matchup. Uh, both teams, I guess you could say, really need this one. Hawks still trying to improve their proceeding. They're exactly 500. Bulls two games under 500, trying to hold off the Magic for that last and final playing spot. I think they probably do. The Magic, uh, as we talked about earlier, got to win out. And I think this Bulls team has to lose out. Is it impossible? No. Unlikely, I think so, because I do think the Bulls get this one done today, man. Continuing to fade the Atlanta Hawks in this spot, man. Until the Hawks show me that they're going to put together back-to-back -to -back wins, I'm going to stick to the story, man. It's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Just go look at the Hawks' schedule, bro. All they do is win one, lose one, win one, lose one, win one, lose one. That's just what they do, and I think the trend continues. Bulls really need this game as well. Uh, I'm going I'm to lean on them here in this one. Lang form does make me a little nervous. I can see the Hawks losing this one by two. So money line is not out of the question. I'm just I'm talking through my thoughts, which I right now. Money line's not out of the question. I think the Bulls get this one done now. They have to, man. They're at home. They are up on the season series two to one. They did win the last meeting, 111 100 in Chicago. Uh, the first two were in Atlanta, so that's a positive sign for this Bulls team. That game was on the 23rd of January. They won it by 11 points. They have won back-to-back -back games. They beat up on the Grizzlies at home in a comeback win. I had the Bulls in that one, man. I thought I was dead in the water in that first half, man. Memphis was putting it to them. But the reason I took the Bulls in that spot was because, A, I thought the Bulls needed it more, and the Grizzlies just continue to do shit like that on the road, man. They just continue to be terrible out there. Bulls walked them boys down and beat them pretty good in that second half. I'm talking about beat them good. 128, 107. They hammered Charlotte the game before that on the road. 121, 191. That's back to back wins for this Bulls team. A Bulls team that has to continue winning. I lean them laying the four. I like the money line a lot. I'm probably going to put that money line Bulls in a few parlays today. Um, Hawks, I mean, all I've seen from them recently is win one, lose one. I don't think it changes. I think they lose in here to Chicago. Here in this one today. In our next matchup of the night, man, we got the Denver Nuggets out on the road facing the Houston Rockets. Nuggets laying nine, total 230. I'm going to be honest, I don't have much on this game, man. I'm probably not going to bet this game. I don't want to bet the Nuggets right now. They have no motivation. Number one seed locked up. Uh, can they beat this Rockets team by double digits? Yes. Um, but at that, in that same breath, I'm seeing Jokic questionable. I'm seeing Murray questionable. Uh, Rockets have been awful. I really don't want to look in their direction either. It's a stay away game for me. The Nuggets have hammered this team all three meetings. 129, 113, 120, 100, and 133, 112. It's the final meeting between these two teams. But again, without knowing what's up with Jokic and Murray, I don't want to lay the points with the Nuggets. And I'm not really looking in the direction of the Houston Rockets in this one. So, stay away from me. No action. For me in this game, man. We're going to get back on the Nuggets come playoff time, though. They're going to be a force to reckon when come playoff time. Right now, they're just going through the motions, trying to stay healthy for the playoffs. I tell y'all all the time, we don't got to bet every game. This is one where I'm not betting it, man, truthfully. In our next matchup of the night, man, we got the Portland Trail Blazers out on the road facing the Memphis Grizzlies. We just kind of talked about both of these teams not that long ago. Memphis laying 17 and a half, total 228. Like I said, the Blazers just pulled that amazing upset over the Timberwolves. It really wasn't that surprising. That's what the Timberwolves do. Disappoint people in spots where they look like it should be a hammer lock. The, the Blazers are terrible. Like, they've been getting blown out by everybody. Hence why the line was at 17 for the Timberwolves. And in typical Timberwolves fashion, the Blazers beat them outright. Line still 17.5 for the Blazers, deservingly so. That's exactly where it should be. Memphis did give up that awful loss to the Chicago Bulls, man. We're dominating the first half, scored 16 points in the third quarter, allowed the Bulls to score 40, and they end up losing pretty good to that Bulls team out on the road where they've struggled all season. What I will say is the Grizzlies don't struggle at home. That's where this Grizzlies team is money at, and I'm, I'm going to lay the points with them in this one. I think it's a bounce-back spot for them on their home floor, man. Memphis... 23-16-1 at home this season. Memphis is also straight up the best home team in the league at 34-6, man. They go stupid, dummy, crazy 
on their home floor. Like Again, this is still an awful Blazers team, man. This Blazers team is bottom of the barrel, full of rotational players and G League players. This Grizzlies team is the much better team. I do see Dylan Brooks as questionable to play, but I don't think he's going to have that much of an impact. I think the Grizzlies, with or without him, take this Blazers team behind the woodshed. I think they uh, blow this team out of the water. Uh, they are working with revenge because the uh, Blazers did win the last meeting, and it was in M Memphis. It's kind of crazy, 122-112 on the 1st of February. Memphis only has six losses at home all season. One of these came to this Portland Trail Blazers team. I expect the Grizzlies to come here locked in, focused, 20-point win for this team today. We know they go stupid, dummy, crazy at home. This Blazers team is still a G League team with rotational players. Let's run it through. They got aired out by New Orleans, 124-90. Sacramento beat them by 40. And then Sacramento turned around and beat them again, 138-114. I think the Grizzlies definitely can do the same thing on their home floor. Do they have a whole lot of motivation to do so as the season's coming to an end? Not really, but I think they could possibly do it with their eyes closed. This Grizzlies team goes dummy at home, up and down the court. I don't think the Blazers can compete all of the points with Memphis at home in a bounce back spot. Here it is. In our next matchup of the night, man, we got the Sacramento Kings out on the road facing the New Orleans Pelicans. Pelicans laying three and a half, total 237 and a half. I'm going to be honest with y'all. Are the Pelicans playing great basketball right now? Yes, man. They've firmly put themselves back in the play-in tournament. Push my mouths out of there. Um, you know, been playing really great recently. I've won four of their last five. But in that same breath, I don't understand this line. There's no way in hell the Pelicans should be laying three and a half on the Kings. Huh? Can we be for real? Can we be for real? Give me the Kings plus a three and a half, man. I think the Kings mess around with this game outright. The Pelicans have been playing better basketball. Yes, I will give them all the credit in the world for that. But this here, no, sir. No, sir. No way should the Pelicans be laying three and a half on the Kings. The Kings are the best road cover team in the league now. Um, at 25 and 13, they've covered in 65.8% of their games on the road. That's league best. For majority of the season, it was the New York Knicks. But now number one is the Kings. Number two, the Utah Jazz. Number three, the New York Knicks. Number four, the Orlando Magic. That sounds about right, right? Number five, Milwaukee. Number six, Oklahoma City. That sounds like the best road teams in the league. To me, the Sacramento Kings team has done nothing but hoop on the road all season. They're 12 games above 500 ATS-wise on the road. Like, that's unheard of. You know why? Because a lot of people just hate on this Kings team. Like, let's not act like this Kings team is not 16 games above 500. Let's like, not act like this Kings team is not third in the West. Um... Pelicans have been playing great basketball, but no way in hell should this line be three and a half. If anything, it should be like a pick 'em. Um, I got to take the Kings in this one. I just think this line's off. So I'm taking the Kings. Do the New Orleans Pelicans need this one more? Yes. Um, yes. And the Pelicans did beat this Kings team in the only meeting in New Orleans this season, 136-104. They hammered them in New Orleans, actually, uh, on the 5th of February. But... That was a weird game. Uh, Trey Murphy ended up going off in that game. And I don't know, man. Maybe I'm overcomplicated. Maybe I'm hating on this Pelicans team. That all could be true. But in that same breath, I'm going down swinging with the Kings. I've been on the Kings a ton coming out of the All-Star break. They've done nothing but absolutely hope. I know they lost that last one to the Spurs um, on their home floor. But that makes me love them even more. This is a definite bounce back spot for the Kings. I would not be surprised at all if they beat this Pelicans team straight up. Pelicans have been playing great basketball. I know that, but no way in hell should they be favored over this Kings team, man. Give me the Kings, plus a three and a half, and I'm sprinkling some on the money line. Here it is. In our next matchup of the night, man, we got the Los Angeles Lakers, man. The Lake Show out on the road facing the Utah Jazz. Lakers laying nine, total 236. Looks like this is going to be the team I'm cheering for in the playoffs, man. The Los Angeles Lakers. As y'all know, I'm LeBron's biggest fan. And uh, my Mavs, my favorite team, will not make the playoffs. So it's looking like it's really disgusting. I know I keep talking about it. I don't want to talk about it. But it just frustrates me to my core, man. We went to the Western Conference Finals last year. Now we're not even going to make the plan, let alone the playoffs. But the plan, frustrating. So looks like I'm officially joining the bandwagon of the Lake Show. It's not really joining because I'm always on LeBron's bandwagon. So, all that said, tonight, though, I do think the Lakers win this game, continue trying to get out of the plane. They could possibly get out of there if the Clippers and the Warriors don't chill out. Lakers could uh, be out of the playing tournament in its entirety. But I do think they win this game, but I think Lang 9 is just too many points, especially on a Utah Jazz team that goes stupid, dummy, crazy in this spot. 
Um, the Jazz as home underdogs are money. 10 and 3 ATS this season. Uh, this is where they go stupid dummy crazy at, man. I will say, the injury report for this game gives me a little pause for concern. Uh, but we know the Lakers always playing the um, roster game. I'm seeing Scottie Pippen Jr., LeBron James, Anthony Davis, and D'Angelo Russell all questionable. I think they all play, though. I don't really know about Scottie Pippen Jr., but the other three, I think they play. Uh, they, like I said a minute ago, they can still get out of the playing tournament. And I think that's huge for this Lakers team, man, to get a few extra days of rest for their older guys. They need to get out of their playing tournament. And I wouldn't be surprised if they do so. And I would not be surprised if they won this game. But I think the Jazz keep it competitive. The Jazz injury report is some possible some concern as well. As Walker Kessler out. Lowry Marketing questionable. Colin Sexton questionable. Rudy Gay out. Jordan Clarkson out. But a lot of those guys been out for quite some time. The Jazz have still been covering spreads, man. I think this is slightly too many points. I think the Lakers win the game. But I think it's like a five, six point win for the Lakers. They're happy, content with that. The Jazz continue to cover spreads. Is Jazz going to be a money team again next year? Kind of like they were to begin this year, man. I, I, I kind of like this Jazz team a lot. I can't wait till they get back healthy next year. Um, but tonight, I think they cover the spread for us. I think the Lakers win this game. I think they fail to cover. Um, and I think they possibly get out of the play when it's all said and done. Uh, but I'm going to take the Jazz plus the nine as home underdogs where they've been money at all season. One more time, 10-3 and three ATS. They've covered in 77 points. 77% of their games in this spot, man. This is what the Jazz do. I'm going to grab the nine here in this one. In our next matchup of the night, man, we got the Thunder Buddies, the Cover Buddies, out on the road facing the Golden State Warriors, man. Warriors laying eight, total 244. Interesting game, man. The Thunder Buddies are no longer the best cover team in the league, man. Um, part of that is due to they were favorites in a lot of the recent games and just were not covering the spreads, man. They have not been in the spots where we've loved them for the majority of the season. Uh, that underdog role, getting slightly too many points, people hating on them. That's the spot where the Thunder goes stupid, dummy, crazy, man. Here recently, like they were favored over Portland. I know they were favored over Charlotte, favored over Detroit, probably favored over Indiana. Um, they were in that spot against Phoenix. They did not cover, though. Phoenix ended up winning that one by 10. Tonight, though, I'm back on the Thunder Buddies, man. I think they do cover against the Warriors. I know uh, fading the Warriors at home is not for the weak-hearted as the Warriors Go stupid, dummy, crazy at home, man. The best home cover team in the entire NBA right now is the Golden State Warriors at 26-13-1. Have covered in 66.7% of their games on their home floor. This is where the Warriors go crazy at, man. We know they got magnets in the rim in Chase Center. Um, it's going to be a hell of a game, man. I just think the Thunder desperately need to keep this one competitive. If not, try to win it outright as the Thunder are in that 10th spot for the final play-in spot. Um, barely holding on above my Mavs, but I do think they already got it locked up. I think my Mavs, if y'all saw the report yesterday, thinking about sitting Kyrie and Luka, it's disgusting, bro. It's disgusting. But I do think the Thunder keep this one competitive. I really do. I think we're looking at, uh, if I had to call it right now, I think the Warriors win this one by three points. I think this one's going to be super tight. Um, I don't like fading the Warriors at home. We love fading the Warriors out on the road, man. We damn near fade them out on the road every opportunity we get. At home, we love to ride the Warriors, but I got my Thunder Buddies today, and they're giving my Thunder Buddies eight. I, at the top of this, I said the Thunder Buddies are not the best cover team in the league anymore because they've been laying points, and that's the truth. These are the spots right here where the Thunder Buddies thrive, man. These are the spots where we've made a ton of money on the Thunder all season. Just getting slightly too many points against good teams, man. That's where the Thunder Buddies go stupid dummy crazy at i think the warriors win this one by three i do i think the thunder keep this one super competitive and cover the line i'm gonna grab the points with my favorite money making team this season the thunder buddies the cover buddies in our last and final matchup of the night man we got the san antonio spurs out on the road facing the phoenix suns phoenix laying 18 total 236 i'm laying that 18 with the suns in this one man don't ever complicate it suns have been absolutely in that mode since getting Kevin Durant back. It's like they flipped the switch as soon as they got him. And they should win this one by 20 plus. Uh, the Spurs did beat the Kings in their last one, man. 142-134 in overtime as huge underdogs. And that one was really surprising. Really, really surprising. I did not see that coming out of uh, thin air. But in that same breath, it's a terrible spot for the Suns, man. It's going to be their fifth road game in their last six games. Um... You know, they got hammered by Golden State, hammered by Utah, hammered by Boston, hammered by Washington. They did beat the Kings in that last one. I don't think that 
bodes well tonight. I think the Suns just continue to stay in that mode. Suns trying to get in playoff form with the playoffs right on the horizon. Trying to get acclimated to having Kevin Durant in the mix, man. I think they just continue rolling. Um, they've been rolling. They just hammered the Thunder by 10, covered, hammered the Denver Nuggets. Did not cover. That one made me mad that day, 193. If they would have won that game, and well, they did win it. If they would have covered in that game, I would have swept that day, went 6-0. and They were covering the whole game and allowed the Nuggets to get that backdoor cover. It was really annoying. Uh, they did win that one, though. Beat up on Minnesota, 107-100. Took the Jazz behind the shed. Took Philly behind the shed. I don't want to fade the Suns right now, especially not for the Spurs. Spurs can be scrappy at some times in the season. I don't think tonight's one of those spots. Again, terrible spot. Fifth road game in their last six games. Um, nah, I don't see it happening. And I think the Suns keep it rolling. I'll lay the 18 here in our last and final matchup of the night. And that's going to conclude today's episode on the Jam Session on April 4th. 2023 man thank y'all for watching smash that like button for your god man subscribe if you're new and drop y'all like down in the comments as you know i love going through seeing who y'all like my best bets can be found over at pick dogs premium just click that link in the description it takes you right to my handicapper page that's where you can find my long-term packages three days seven day 30 day monthly yearly seasonal you can also find all my bets for today's action including my 19 dollar nba jam session play man we've hit seven of our last 10 on that uh, we go for eight of 11 today man we hit the last one with the milwaukee bucks two days ago there was no nba yesterday so of course no play but um yeah man we're trying to keep the momentum rolling forward into this week into today i love today's play man scoop it up 19 bucks you can also scoop up my 25 dollar mlb uh play of the day we did drop it yesterday with my rangers man uh they got beat by the o's yesterday at home we're four and one on that play to begin the year though so we're gonna bounce back on it try to keep that momentum rolling forward on that play as well i got packages as well with all my plays for today's action also in that link man so scoop all that up over there Follow me on Twitter at ParlayGuyJ and check out my live show. I'll be live today, per usual, 3 Central, 4 Eastern. As I bring on a guest, we cook up the NBA for y'all one more time. We update y'all on late injury news and information that came out of the association. And we drop a free parlay for y'all at the end of the show, man. So come spend some time with your guy later on today, 3 Central, 4 Eastern, right here on the Pig Dogs YouTube channel. Uh, we're going to cook it up per usual. We got a huge card today, man, 13 games. We just cooked it up for the first time a minute ago, man. So hopefully we make some money tonight. You know we're going to try to do just that. Thank you all for watching. It's been your guy, Jay Briggs. I'll see you all later on today, man. Let's make some money tonight in the NBA. Let's keep this momentum rolling forward. I'll see you all out. I'm out of here.